fanboys and fangirls to the What the Fanboy podcast. That's um, us. That's us. That's us. This week we had a couple... Oh, Luke's stripping down I'm over disrobing. here. Yes. Hold on. I mean, well, I just took off a jacket. That's it. I'm done. All right. Well, he now that he's cooled off a little bit. The rest bit, is later. Um, <laughs> before we get into our main topic of Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Shazam. We got to talk Shazam. about... There are a few new trailers this week. Um... They'll go pretty quick, because, boy, I wasn't impressed with really any of them. But to start out with, we had Strays, which I guess was maybe was a, while a while ago, but I only first saw it this week, so... <clears throat> yeah, Don't. big thumbs down. <laughs> this is like a like a Will Ferrell voices live-action dog. They lost to me at Will Ferrell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still a Will Ferrell fan, but... Yeah, this didn't look good at all, unfortunately. Um, next, we have Joyride, which is from the producers, the team that, that did Crazy Rich Asians, um, about kind of a going, you know, an, an adopted um, Chinese girl going back to China <clears throat> as like a young adult and the shenanigans. It, you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of The Hangover. Yeah, it gave okay. me some real Hangover it did, vibes. Yeah. Um, look, Crazy Rich Asians was like awesome, amazing, and a, and and well received. So maybe there's a secret ingredient here that I'm just not hold on picking gonna, up in the trailer. I'm going backwards. Okay, how was Crazy Rich Asians involved? Is it? It's from, from the, the produ- producers or directors or I don't. I from don't, the producers, doesn't matter. Don't care. <laughs> Great, you paid, I think, you I think paid was, for a movie. Yeah. Like, if it was from the director of Crazy Rich Asians well, or the writer. That. I'm looking right now. Then okay. you've got my attention. Fair enough, fair it's enough. Directed by the writer of Crazy Rich Asians. Okay, okay, we're on, I'm, I'm, I'm back on. We have some creative okay, influence there. Yeah. So, um, from yeah. The producer the trailer, of the, the trailer Rings was, and Hobbit trilogy. Was kind of middle of the road. I'll give it a sideways thumb, the trailer. Yeah. But... Again, it interest, did, it, it I just chuckle. It I didn't watch it. I saw like a couple like little clips from it, but mm-hmm. I haven't seen it, so I'm not gonna give it a thumbs up or thumbs down. But I definitely don't think it's. I agree with you guys. I don't think it's good or bad. <laughs> so many shoes in it, and she's really good. So yeah, she is. Um, and then the last one I have on my list is Teenage Kraken. This is a. Uh, <laughs> what? I think it's a Universal animated kids movie about. Oh. Watch this. The like again, kind of coming of age girl who's a kraken, then kra- then the like the, the sea monster kraken. Um, krakens are the good creatures, and the mermaids are the bad creatures. That's the twist. So. Well, in the trailer, it just felt more like krakens were the nerds, and mermaids yeah. were the cool kids. <laughs> uh I was hoping Brett would turn this trailer off, honestly. Yeah, you were, like, very much... I mean, I'll give it a thumbs down, too, but, like... I just didn't even like just, the animation. Like, you it were was... kind of talking over it, and... <laughs> I was playing Metroid. But yeah, I, Metroid was I'm on, like so... No, it, that's, that's fine. It doesn't, it, it doesn't look like it's made for us, and, uh, and that's okay. You know what? Yes. We are not the demographic that that is aiming for. Definitely not. So our opinion doesn't really matter. I mean, maybe me more than you, just because like I have have a a daughter, a child who I would take to go see animated movies. But I don't. You don't. You don't. I don't have to see it. Great. (laughs) (laughs) And if you all of a sudden said you did, I would be very confused. So when this releases and has like a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes, everybody's like, "We'll be eating our words." (laughs) That's that's for sure. I need none. That doesn't surprise me. Luke. Nothing. No, you eat all the things. I don't care about Ron Tomatoes. It's just a bunch of people that don't like superhero movies. <laughs> they hate Zack Snyder. Well, we can talk about... They, uh, give, they give bad reviews to movies. Movie now. You're ready. Because Ron Tomatoes totally reviews movies. Definitely. Every single score that Ron Tomatoes is ever getting out is one person's opinion... Based on what they saw from that movie, obviously, I totally understand how Rotten Tomatoes works, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You sure. You've nailed it. You, yeah. You got it. At least you. There's no way it's an it's an 
like a bunch of other reviews aggregated together to <laughs> no. put a score so you can kind of get a semblance of maybe how well the movie is being received by a group of people that make a living reviewing movies. It's no way. I hope I hope you guys watching or listening were able to follow that because <laughs> because it was Luke, a bit of a ramble. Well, Luke, Luke it was a bit of a ramble. Uh, rightly brings up the frustration of like, oh, like that movie. That movie got an awful Rotten Tomato score. Mm-hmm. Like we'll talk about Shazam here, which has um, we can talk about its Rotten Tomatoes, but any movie, and you know, people will will kind of hang is a movie good on. A Rotten Tomatoes score. Yeah. On Rotten Tomatoes scores. And I think the I think the answer is no. Pretty safe to say. But there is value in aggregate scores. You just have to understand what they mean. Um, yeah. And how they... How you should interpret them. Mm-hmm. So, um, we can talk about all that here in a little bit. I first want to know what you guys thought of Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Gosh dang it, I had a good old time watching this. I laughed my little booty off. <laughs> I'm I'm with Luke. I had a good time. I thought I uh I thought it was it was funny. The humor definitely landed better than I expected it to. because uh, I knew they were gonna up the ante on that front. Mm-hmm. Um and I think everybody like nobody in it is like overacting or feels like they don't know what movie they're in, which yeah. I can appreciate. So yeah. I enjoyed it. Also, just loved the new suits so much. Yeah. I thought they looked so good. It was a nice update on the suit. Yeah, they looked so they good. They looked very good. They looked very good. Um, <clears throat> I, too, had a blast with Shazam uh, 2. I, too, had a Shazam blast with Shazam 2. And Yay, you did it. I did it. I still struggled <laughs> with it. But, um, no, I I agree. I'm kind of confused on the mixed reviews from critics. It's gotten a pretty positive audience. Yeah, the audience ratings. score is high, um, like 87%. But it really, it is more of the same. I think <clears throat> Sandberg knows who this character is, what this kind of niche of the DC universe, the cinematic universe is it's not trying to be superman it's not trying to be batman it's it's its own thing and it's it works for me it works for me i don't know i don't know what people were expecting but this felt to me like more of the same in, yeah. a, in a good way yeah i think it might um as far as reviews go the first one had a really heartfelt story and while this one is is there too it's definitely not as strong it it does feel a little bit put on the black back burner yeah, it's yes, like sure. big time hey here's sure. kind of the little emotional pull and here we go we're gonna fight a dragon and what's crazy though yeah. to me is like the little emotional pull that you talk about is actually really good yeah like it, it, i thought it worked around really yeah, well. i was like oh my gosh like this should not hit me as hard we've not spent any time dealing with this but yeah. then like i think when I, it does happen you're like oh i think asher angel oh. might just be a super underrated actor he's too. good yeah. yeah he's, he's because, surprisingly like, good where that scene really comes through and like the beginning of the third act is when he talks for a minute or less yeah and you're just like oh wow that was good mm-hmm. yeah. well was delivered good. yeah yeah so good job asher angel yeah um i mean we gotta talk about the family the family so in my letterbox review um it was kind of my my high point of the entire movie was the Shazam lay. Mm-hmm. Yes. What, what I wrote was the Shazam lay, both his children and their heroic counterparts remain the best part of Shazam. Yes. I would agree Just, with that. Mm-hmm. I was so glad we got more of them as adults too. And they um, have good chemistry. No, ma- no matter. Chemistry. And no matter what kind of combination you have of the adults or the kids, mm-hmm. it all seems to flow really, really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, huge shout out to their casting group. They, mm-hmm. I mean, they did such a good job with this. It, it's awesome. But yeah, I I love the Shazamleys. Ross Butler, who's Eugene, gets a lot more to like say and do than he does in the first one. Obviously, yeah. Um, tons of fun. Like loved the whole bit with him mapping out the rooms or whatever, mm-hmm. and like sitting in the chair while they're going through the par- presentation. He's just like, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting him to sit down in the chair and still be covered in the stuff. So like mm-hmm. when it cuts to him and he's just like still covered in it, I was like, what? <laughs> what? Like just little. I don't know. I, I feel like you could just so good. Shazam and 
Marie Shazam and he'd be clean. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, I, I think yeah, all of them. And what's funny is two of them were in the Justice League Immortal movie casting. Yeah. DJ Catrona. Oh. Yeah, he was going to be Superman, which is Pedro. Yeah. And Adam Brody was going to be the Flash. Oh. So they find their DC homes in a Shazam movie. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, they were all good, though. They, they were all good. What about our antagonists? We have the sisters, the daughters of Atlas. Mm-hmm. Yes. With Helen Mirren uh, and Lucy Liu. And is and the Ray- third one a spoiler? I don't know if that's considered a spoiler or not. Um, I don't Maybe a minor so. spoiler. It, it's revealed pretty, Very, pretty early on. Yeah. Pretty early on. And I think it was in one of the trailers. Yeah. Okay. It, it shows her using power. Yeah. But it, yeah. Yeah. So um, Rachel Zegler. Yeah. Yeah. So this was gonna. This was one of my worry points going in. I thought it was just gonna be throwaway villains, but honestly, I thought they worked really well. Yeah, they were good. Um, and it might be the people playing them. It might be that just they gave them screen time. I feel like a lot of times they're just like, we need a villain for this movie. Let them do their thing. Like here we are doing something bad. But it's and they're all different. You got it, Helen Mirren. It really like, benefits uh, from them having distinct ideologies yes. Yes. and wants and needs because then they can kind of interact amongst themselves. They even have a little bit of conflict. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whereas you know, if it's just General Zod, it's it's just General Zod, right? Like right. then he has his minions, and there's no one to really push back against them except our hero. Here we get all three of them mixing it up a little bit throughout the film until they kind of. You know, find their final resting places, um, but yeah, I, I agree. I, I think it worked really well. I think Lucy Liu is kind of the glue. Yes, there, she's got the most to really chew on, and I think uh, everyone else showed up though. They knew what they, their roles yeah. were, and yeah, I I agree with you though. The the ideologies being different is is a huge huge bonus. I I just love too that like. We get we allow them to stretch their legs a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, obviously you get to see them early on, but then like when they're in their realm and they're discussing, and it, it's just it's nice to see villains not just be a punching bag. Yeah, mm-hmm. for once in yeah. a superhero movie. Yeah, and I love the chemistry of Zegler and uh, Jack Dylan Grazer. Yes, yeah, they were great together. Yes. They have really good chemistry. Yes. Yep. I think Jack Dylan Grazer is kind of one of those actors. I think can have chemistry with anybody though, because mm-hmm. he's really good. Yeah, like, he he's gonna be a lot of fun to watch. Kind of grow into his career. That's okay. Spinning that off into somebody else, we got a lot more of, which was Jamon Honsu. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I was not expecting to get so much of him in this movie, and that made me so happy. He was mm-hmm. funny too. Yeah, yeah. He killed it, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah him and him and Freddy have again a nice, good chemistry. A nice little side quest that is great. Yeah, it's, it's great. I should go. Your knees pop every time you move. <laughs> <laughs> good call. And then like they they don't really. It's to the side, but they pop again, which is yeah, yeah. like as he's walking away. <laughs> Dude, it's it's so. I'm with you guys. I think Luke and I were kind of talking about it as we walked out of the theater. It's amazing how like critics really are way lower on this than I would expect them to be. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. like coming out of it, I was like, that is actually pretty good. Like I enjoyed it quite a bit. So mm-hmm. it's just because like thinking back now, going through the moments, like the last we got, the good villains, the interesting, although really small, um, heartfelt story for for Billy and. It's like, man, this is a good movie with a lot of good stuff in it. Yeah. yeah. And it, I think, I don't know, a lot of it comes down to is who reviewed it for that yeah. website. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, you go to IGN and a lot of people give IGN a lot of crap because they're like, wow, IGN gave this a seven again. It's like, it's a different person. Yeah. It's like, once you go to, if you agree with somebody on IGN's website, you should follow them. Mm-hmm. on right. twitter or something right. or follow their rotten tomatoes profile yeah and it, you know kind of it our kind of universal uh praise for this movie may come off as like okay we're giving this an, an aggregate review but it's not we're each going to give our our own honest feedback mm-hmm. and if you know you 
tend to agree with Brett more, you know, start taking Sorry. Brett's reviews more to heart. Um, if you're like, oh my gosh, Luke's right. Snyder is the worst director ever. Whoa, whoa, and... whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I didn't say that. I don't think he's very good, but he's not the worst ever. Um, you know, you can then put more weight on Luke's review. Um, so even within ourselves, I would say, you know, if you're listening, watching the show, take take that into heart more than, oh, like a majority of critics thought this was bad. Or the majority of the audience thought it was good. Um, I think you can look at those and be like, okay, like that's interesting. Uh, it's if Generally, if a movie gets lots of uh, audience praise, that probably means it's a good time. Yep. yep. More, more than anything else. Not even talking about quality of movie, just you're probably going to have like a smile on your face. And let's 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 go into this too. I I told you this after we saw the movie. Yeah. Because I thought this was super interesting. And of all things that I, it helped me like rewire my brain because like you just kind of forget stuff sometimes. Yeah. It's like what is the point of a review? It's should you use your money to spend your time on this? Yeah. Kind of from a My Name is Bife review about Lightfall. <laughs> and uh, I was just like, oh, yeah. You can't, you can't forget that. Like, And I feel like a lot now reviews are weaponized to justify opinions instead of like post-watching something. Sure. Uh, well, as soon as... Well, the internet being the internet, this would have happened anyways. But I think as soon as uh, production companies started slapping... Rotten Tomato, Rotten Tomato scores. scores on their, like, marketing materials. That's when it became a real war, mm -hmm. unfortunately. They, like, they should have never done that. I'm not even sure I really appreciate when they pull, you know, five words out of a review and stick it on their marketing either. Because it's with, completely out of context. With dots on both ends and bracket, right. brackets in the middle. Yeah. This was... The, the, Really good. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm gonna go read this review. So yeah, um, do they're, they're, speaking of reviews too. Yeah, something that I thought was interesting, and you talk about Rotten Tomatoes versus the industry, and yada yada yada. Ben Affleck did the big thing on the Hollywood Reporter, or yeah. whatever, uh, the big interview, and one of the things he said, and and keep in mind, like Affleck's an actor director, he's very big in in cinema as a whole. And he, immediately, when he referred back to reviews, he referred to an IMDb score. Mm -hmm. He didn't refer to a Rotten Tomatoes score. He went to an IMDb score. So, do with that what you will, but... I definitely think, you know... <clears throat> I don't think that's rotten, an empty thing. Rotten Tomatoes has gotten big. Yes. That said, I think there are two places I would always look first. Rotten, or IMDb mm -hmm. and uh, Letterbox. Mostly because people on Letterbox and IMDb are a little more invested um, than your general audience member. I now for critic stuff again. I I just think that it's Rotten Tomatoes is what it is is trying to be. Uh, you know, oh, we want to we we want to show up on the page as one of the little blurbs uh, for, for the critics, right? The critics want to have a little blurb, so they're going to yeah. be a little more clickbaity in their verbiage. Got to put a pun in there. Yeah, yeah. But Shazam is electrifying! <laughs> Lee bad. <No. laughs> that, was um, the, that was the dot, dot, dot. The other, the other yeah. things I wanted to talk about were, you know, we, we, we got some Sandberg horror in this. Yes. The magical creatures were... Okay. Sorry, I'm totally interrupting you, and I'm sorry, but you know how you know that Sandberg is a horror director and not something else? Because when the scary monsters show up, people don't run. Yeah. They look at it, and they go, hmm, what's that? <laughs> uh, Should I touch it? Scorpion okay. Stinger comes out. <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> that entire thing's bigger than my body. What, what, what should we do here? Run. <laughs> Just run. Just run. run. I just I want to see that in a horror movie. Yeah, 
You're like, as soon as oh, something there's starts. a stinger, just... <laughs> it's like, I'm gone. Luke wants to make the world's shortest horror movie. I also, like, with Sam Bird, up. the early, the early, the first time you meet the sisters, or the daughters, Yeah, they're, like, breaking necks, or like, <laughs> yeah, like, oh the, my gosh! The brutality in that opening scene is, it's pretty intense. It very, felt very horror-esque. Yeah. So that's why I brought that up. But yeah, definitely, you can definitely feel his... His horror roots. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I thought those were good. I thought the dragon was great. I loved the fact that it was made out of wood. I liked how they made fun of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they had they had a little good, uh, you know, joke about it. Um, but again, like, just the because they, I don't know, maybe it is that way in the comics, but what they were able to do visually with it, I thought looked really good. And mm -hmm. also, overall, VFX on this, I, I thought they looked pretty good. For the most part, yes. There, there was, yeah. there, there's a few, there's, there's always, a few bits. Look, these days, no movie's perfect. Yes, unless it's Avatar <laughs> or Dune. Dune, pretty good. Dune was very, very good as well. But it also wasn't to trying to Dune. have a Cyclops ram a its horn into a dude or something. I don't know. Did that happen? I felt like that. Yeah, happened. that Cyclops definitely <laughs> killed people. <laughs> <laughs> but. Those monsters, like, honestly, I was, like, the monsters, like, starting. are we spoilers? I don't even know if I should no, be saying some of this stuff. we are not in spoilers. I think it's okay. There's monsters. There's, There's monsters. It's in the marketing. There's monsters in the third act. Um, and honestly, like, they started killing people, and I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I expected to cut away. Yeah, yeah. But they no, it's just, what's <laughs> this? <laughs> oh, they're dead. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Indeed. Leave it the leave leave, leave it, it the critics to critique the critics for critiquing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what dude, who who watches the Watchmen? I watched Watchmen. It was good. <laughs> the TV show. The TV show. Who <laughs> is okay? We have to critique the critiquers. That's right. Somebody's got to do it. Someone has to. That's the we're shifting our entire podcast to for critiquing critics. Can we have like a review reviews review the review? Dude, yes. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's oh, review. We reviews. will make absolutely no friends in Hollywood. <laughs> we don't need friends. We have family. Oh, That's no. right. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Or family. <laughs> oh, that was good. Do we uh, want to give our, our ratings and then maybe talk a little bit in spoilers? Sure, real quick before ratings. I'm sorry. Music. Good. good. Yes, good. Um, Been we, listening to we it. We talked about how the actors were all good. We didn't really think there were any weak links. No. Um, I need um, more of the Flosser parents. It. I mean, though, I, I don't think there's going to be another one. Yeah. But when, if there's another there one, give me it. Oh, give me the... Since, like, every DC movie now gets its HBO TV show spinoff, can I have a Battle Wagon spinoff? Yes, Where dude. it's like, hey, you know, family had a bit of a rough time with this fight. Mm -hmm. We're going on a road trip. Love it. And they they can have the kids and the Shazamly, and they can, like, go in and out. They have to save the day across the country. I want to Eventually, pitch. they make it to the Grand Canyon. It's... Good old time. Oh my god! And then they leave their kids. Oh my god! It's Joe H Dirt. HBO, HBO right here. Yes. Come on. Obviously, I don't want to make it. I don't have a lot of experience, but you can find somebody to do that. Here, I'll pitch my short. It's them going Christmas shopping for all the foster kids <gasps> while they're out fighting crime, and they have to get back in That's time. That's a holiday special. Yes, it's perfect. Exactly. Before they have to get back before the Shazamly's done fighting crime, and so like it's them going through the streets as like the things are happening above them in the battle wagon, mm -hmm. of course. Um. And then uh, they, they don't realize that Darla has actually just been in the back of the battle wagon the whole time. Eating Skittles. Just, yeah, something goofy. Peeking at Christmas gifts. Yep. <laughs> I think that'd be fun. That's great. Okay, review, or uh, ratings. What are you guys get, giving it? Fanboy worthy. It's a fanboy worthy. I agree. I, I think if, you've, if you like the first one, this one is will be right up your alley. Heck oh, yeah. 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 Tons of fun. Yeah. Oh, a yeah. lot of fun. A you little definitely bit, a little bit of scary. Yeah. And uh, a little bit of heart, a little bit of heart. Yeah, I don't think you'll be disappointed. No, agreed. So, yeah, let's talk some spoilers. That now, um, if you spoilers. look, spoilers, spoilers, 
maybe you don't care about this. Um, if you haven't seen it, which there's a good chance you haven't, based on the box office this weekend. Yeah. Uh, now's your time. Now's your opportunity to dip out. But if you don't care about spoilers, we're, we'll talk about some things that hey, maybe... Hey, Warner will... Bros. doesn't even care about spoilers. Intrigue. They're, just, yeah. they're spoiling everything in their TV spots. So, uh, did I hear, did I hear that the big cameo was spoiled? Yeah, in a TV spot. In a TV spot? Yeah. Yeah, I knew it was coming. Yeah. Was... I'm so glad I didn't see that. Yeah. I saw it a thousand times. Because I would have been really frustrated if I had seen that and then gotten the first scene with, again, spoiler here, with Wonder Woman n- never showing her head. <laughs> Look, it was a great bit. But I if thought I it was knew, funny, yeah. If I knew she was going to be in the movie and then they did that, I would have been a little more upset. Yeah. Um, well, so I wasn't really upset. I wasn't upset, but I was not <laughs> expecting what they did. Yeah. With the, face. Yeah. <laughs> with the wizard's face. With the wizard's face. I was like, whoa, this is weird. <laughs> but I definitely was like, oh, I like that they're playing with the funny cameo thing from the first one. Yeah. Like, this is hilarious. And then, <laughs> then you finally see her face and it's the wizard. Yeah. Like, oh, no. <laughs> oh. Nightmare fuel. <laughs> yes. I, yeah, it was, it was funny. But yeah. No, she's in it. Wonder Woman's in it. That was a thing. That was a thing. It was good to see her. It was know. good to it, see her. It was her. nice to see her, yeah. I just didn't really like what happened. <laughs> oh. Like, oh, Billy's dead. Whoop, he's back. It's I like, think, so that's part of why I think critics are so hard on it. Because, it, one, the third act is a huge CGI fight. Yeah. In a dark space. Yeah. And then that thing with the staff and Wonder Woman just being like, <laughs> Billy. <laughs> like, it's just like, whoa. Those it, two things I could see critics being like, Really? Yeah, this movie sucks. Like, <laughs> yeah, like I could see them feeling that way. I didn't feel that way, but I wish he just like when they all go walk down there. I feel like they should have like got some more stuff in it. They should have found like a crisp blackened body or something. <laughs> and been like, oh no, this is probably him. And then like have Billy walk out. And he's like, oh, watch your body. Be like. <laughs> That's not me, guys. <laughs> then it's fine. Like Yeah. But then, then you don't get the one room and cameo, and yeah. I feel like they were planning on that. Yeah. But Yeah, the, the fake the fake out death was uh, they they lingered on it long enough. Like they had they had buried him to the in and I was like, are they actually <laughs> surely, guys wait, like, surely two they're not there. doing this? Surely they're not, and then of course it's like the they have the line, and I'm like, okay, okay. It, I can, I agree, Tyler. I understand why you know maybe more critics were Probably critical on, that. Um, yeah, on yeah. that decision, and it's something that I typically you know rake against. Um, I'm I'm not a huge fan of fake out deaths. Uh, that said, this it would have been a, a very different tone. If he actually, if he had yeah. actually died, yeah, um, and that's that's just not what Shazam is. So I, I really was kind of expecting him to come back as, mm-hmm. as soon as that happened. I'd say the good part though about like with having Wonder Woman there is they like set that up throughout the whole movie, which I think is well it was a done. nice little payoff. Yeah. yeah, like how he he's constantly talking about Wonder Woman. He has the the sun a newspaper, or whatever. It's like Shazam and Wonder Woman dating. Yeah, um, <laughs> his dream and. And she shows up, and, and then like, she's hey, there. Hey, hey! She's there to save the day. Yeah. Um, what did you guys think of? I want to say it's Elena, 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 uh, Helen, Hespera. Hespera. The, See, I'm getting the main. I'm the elder Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren. I'm I'm combining her character <laughs> name with her actress or with her actual. I'm name. trying not to call her old. <laughs> <laughs> um. You know, she had a little bit of a turn there at the end. Would you guys think of that dynamic between, you know, her and Lucy Liu and uh, Zegler? I, I liked bought it. it. Yeah, I bought I, it. Yeah, and I think it kind of goes into what we were talking before about they all have different ideologies. Mm-hmm. You've got Lucy Liu, who's here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. Yeah. And she's out of bubblegum. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I'm planting the seed here. I'm going to kill all of them. I don't really care. Mm-hmm. There's Helen Mirren who's like, I'll drop a body to get what I want. But, like, let's go home when we're done. Like, right. come right. on. There's Zegler who doesn't even really want to do it. Mm-hmm. But then finds herself being kind of entangled with yeah. the humans, right? Yeah. yeah. 
So I think that helps mm. a lot with her with her turn in the third act. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it felt good, and it was a nice use case of the the big shield bubble, mm-hmm. right? It was like, okay, no, she has control the over Einstein this. Orb. <laughs> the Einstein orb, that's right. Yeah, or that the, nice, the Tesla, Tesla orb. orb yeah. that, that was a cool little callback too that yeah. they set that up earlier. As soon as as soon as it shrunk down, I was like, okay, and I, I know where they're going. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. Yeah, because they blew it, blew it earlier. It was cool too how it looked. Like when in the final stages, like lightning's flying everywhere, mm-hmm. Shazam's flying everywhere. You're like this. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad we finally got Shazam to take somebody out while yelling Shazam. Yeah, <laughs> which I will, I will, I'm always a fan of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Luke, I say, you had I mentioned... say finally, like, why haven't they done it yet? It's the second movie, <laughs> like... seven movies, and we still don't have it. Um, Luke, you had mentioned something and... earlier that you were kind of wanting to comment on in spoilers was it with the monsters oh just i was i was i wasn't sure if i should be talking about all the third act monsters but i do want to talk about this because in in the past 12 months six months mm-hmm. we've gotten two movies of characters that say shazam to get abilities yeah and in those both of those third acts creatures show up and you have to fight them mm-hmm. you know what the difference is in one of them you have people dying and running for their lives. And the other one, you have a kid with a skateboard. <laughs> Just whacking them. And everything's cool. You also have characters that you actually care about to what, this point. Hold on. The other things. One of those was an overly serious movie. Yeah. And one of those was a comedy. And you'll never and guess you'll which one You'll never guess which. which one is which. <laughs> it's like the flip of those situations. It's like... Well, and this kind of comes down to it, like what the the Black story Adam? creation, <laughs> the writing, like they, the the family finds themselves without powers, but they still need to help. It's you know they've they are the family now. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I say family, the Shazamly. Sorry if I'm confusing anyone who is really family. into the Fast and Furious franchise, but like they, you know, have this resource, incredible resource, Steve. Oh yes. my gosh! Steve is great. Well, and we'll talk more about Steve in a second. But what they do is they they find a solution. What is the thing the monsters are all, all afraid of? Yeah, unicorns. So right, so they they have to go. They go do something. Make a decision. It's not just run out and Fight. attack them with yeah. their fists because that doesn't make sense. They go find these all awesome, like awesome, awesome looking yeah. unicorns. Like Dude, a great, great twist cool on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, great and get, marketing. Get there, get there. <laughs> we get the best line in the whole movie. Product Take placement. the rainbow, mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! I I think I screamed a little you, bit. You definitely <laughs> did. You shrieked. Well, I also said it like two seconds before she did. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, you're like taste the. She's rainbow. holding up to it. I was like, I went, wait a minute. I was like, <laughs> taste the rainbow. And then it shows him, and she's like, taste the rainbow, motherfucker. <laughs> like, oh my gosh! This is the best movie ever. It's not, but <laughs> but it's certainly a good time. I was so happy. <laughs> yep, yep, it I was great. The overwhelming feeling when watching this movie is happy, though, which is so yeah. Great. yeah. Even so while watching random compared, people get skewered by giant scorpions. <laughs> yeah, like compared to Black Adam, where you're not necessarily happy the entire time you're watching it, and this, you're like, yeah, this is fun. I definitely wasn't time. happy in that third act. <laughs> Oh, skateboard kid just ruined everything. Who's this? Who's this giant demon that we're fighting now? Yeah, I don't even remember that guy's name. Bog. What? So Bog. Ma- 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 Mephisto. Bog? It was Mephisto, wasn't it? Was it was Mephisto. Yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. For sure. Unfortunately, I remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> um, Steve. Steve. Steve was awesome. Thank you for giving us an all-knowing thing and actually using it in a good way. Yeah. The br- the letters. Right, written back and forth. <laughs> this is so funny. Do Fantastic. we need to pre-prove it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody want a Gatorade? What is this Gatorade? <laughs> it's like, like, dude. Uh, I just think they capture like the Shazamly so well, even through reading the letter. Yeah. Like, ah, it's so funny. Yeah. Yes. Give me more of Steve. Yes. You know give what the, is? Give the fo- the parents Steve. <gasps> give the foster parents Steve for the Christmas list. Yes. I love it. No, it's really unfortunate is that this is gonna make no money. I know. Yeah. And uh, Sandberg has even said like he's done with superheroes. He's gonna go back to horror. Did you see? At his, least for a bit. Did you see Who his Reddit happens, thing? 
Have you guys seen the Reddit thing that was going around? No. So somebody, so he's like, Sandberg's a big Reddit guy. Yeah. Uh, he's a big Reddit fan. And it's kind of how his short blew up was mm-hmm. through Reddit. Anyway, somebody was like talking about how it's underperforming at the box office or something. Other, and they like, like he responded to it in the subreddit, which mm-hmm. is really weird. But he was like, yeah, we kind of saw this coming. Like, it was supposed to happen on open on the same time as Avatar. Yeah. He's like, we kind of... What, what do you think it would have made if it would have done that? Yeah. Right. He's like, we kind of <laughs> saw this coming. Um, I was paid my money up front. Like, yeah. He, he's not upset. So. It kind of even opens the eyes of us to like, what is the studio thinking? Yeah. Yeah. You're just like, okay. Yeah, they this isn't going to make the money we think it is. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Right. Right. It, and it's again, just they're in to hear it vocalized. Yeah. yeah. You're like, oh, this is yeah. weird. Yeah, and it, but it sounds like there isn't any bad blood there. No, I don't um, think so. And, and Sandberg's I, always pretty professional. Um, he's awesome. Despite being, you know, very on social media. Like, I think it's easy when you're a creative on social media to, to get kind of, you know, you can get nasty. Yeah. But he's done a good job of... Um, same with, like, Gunn as well. So my yeah. guess is that they have a good relationship and that obviously this movie was in the can before Gunn and Saffron even came into DC and we're, yeah. like, we're shaking things up. Um, but... But... <laughs> but <laughs> yes. Post-credit scenes. We, should, we do need to talk about the post-credit scenes. Before we do that, we, I do want to say Sandberg uh, did also mention that part of why he wants to get out of superhero stuff right now is social media. Sure. People on the internet are he annoying. He said he was exhausted yeah, by it. Yeah, he's tired yeah. of it. And it. It stresses him out. And I was like, that sucks, man. We suck. I don't know if we suck. Well, not us. You but don't. collectively. Good. Thanks, man. Collectively. Tyler does not suck. Thanks. At least one of us don't. <laughs> Appreciate it, guys. Um, you guys don't suck. Our first post credit scene... We get the team back from, or the team. The Peacemaker Squad. Yeah. Dude, okay. Have you guys heard about the logistical mishap that happened with this? No. no. So it wasn't supposed to be them. Um, it was supposed to be like Hawkman. And it's supposed to be the Black Adam The Justice squad? Society people, oh. yeah. <laughs> and they, ha- they couldn't make it. And they were going to lose like over $100 million. So I don't know how it works financially. You have to look into that. But Sandberg said that Saffron called Gunn. It was like, who can you get here? And Gunn got them two to show up and do that scene. <laughs> they, they went there on like three days notice. Oh my and gosh. And shot that. Yeah. I was like, dude, that's... And, and, and Sandberg said like, we're kind of indebted to Gunn for doing something cool like that. Yes. Yeah. Because they came in, I'm pretty sure they came in and shot it for like almost nothing. Oh, I bet. Which is super cool. But like for those two, like yeah. they're, not, they're not the ones making... No. A million dollars an episode type of thing. No. They're they're there because they love what they do. Right. Mm. And yes, they <clears throat> will take a check. <laughs> no doubt. They deserve to, to make their money, but they're also not going to be the ones that turn up their nose because it... Right, because it's not what they want. It's not what yeah. they want. But yeah, that post credit scene's awesome. I, I liked it. <laughs> it was super goofy. Very goofy. I love watching it be like... <laughs> Wait, the Justice Society? I don't know. <laughs> I just, it's so funny because, like, that is something that, you know, you kind of think about in the back of your mind, but you never really vocalize that. Mm-hmm. And then, like, of course Shazam or Billy is the one to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, like, the whole thesaurus joke. Yeah. Mm. And it's like, okay. Yeah, I'm just looking on thesaurus.com. Yeah. <laughs> and he mentions The Authority. Yep. Which is a film that has been announced. Um, got a name Look, drop the Avengers yeah we got an Avengers <laughs> we got a Captain Marvel name drop too yeah. yes we did by the guy who played Shazam in the old 70s TV show very cool which very in the cool. same very outfit cool Easter egg there um, but also like I think that post credit scene to me just says like he's gonna be around I don't think we'll ever get another Shazam movie like in this space right but, um, I do think Shazam as a character is here to stay. Yeah. And I, I think, think Zachary Levi's version of that character is here to stay. Mm-hmm. Especially considering Levi and Gunn are boys. Yeah. So. And and Levi grew up <laughs> in TV. Mm-hmm. He, I think he loves the medium. He loves the format. I would not be surprised at all if he shows up in in shows. Yeah. Um, as well as movies. Oh, he's going to be in Peacemaker Season 2 or Waller? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're, oh, they're just not going to get along. It's going to be hilarious. Dude, him and Waller would be hilarious. <laughs> yeah. 
Or like introducing him to the other side of the superhero universe where peacemakers just oh my gosh absolutely brutalizing <laughs> people and he's worst. just like what just are we doing? Just do a good away to should jams and be like <laughs> <laughs> and then he's just I gotta go. He's like backing away and he's like Shazam! <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, I definitely think he's around in the future. Agreed. For sure. Agreed. Um, and then our second post credit scene. I freaking love this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. I've been Mind. waiting here for you for <laughs> two years. It just takes me a long time to move around and <laughs> just slither around. Anyway, I'll be right back. <laughs> no, God damn it! <sighs> yeah, that's cool the, of Mark Strong to come one back. One of those that. things that's not going to go anywhere, but Mark, yeah, again, these po- excuse me, these post credit <laughs> scenes just feel like it's the cast having fun. Yeah. It's not like necessarily trying to set up something big and like it's not a marketing thing. It's a here have a have a, have here a, to have a good time. Have a day of shooting yeah, where you just get to laugh and have a good time. Maybe we finished our shoot or I don't know, I don't know how when they schedule these things, but like let's just get together and shoot a thing. I don't know. We mm-hmm. we talk about that all the time yeah. with like wanting to do more short films and stuff like that. Well, let's just get together and shoot a scene. That's all they're doing. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they're just having fun with it. Mm-hmm. So awesome. Just bring back Savannah mm-hmm. for the same. To put him on the same team, but she's name. <laughs> oh my gosh. Crazy. Clash a little bit. So yeah, we all really liked Shazam. Fear Ooh. the gods. Thumbs ups. Yes, Fanboy big thumbs worthy. up. Something else that I think is just really clever mm-hmm. was they use like a throwaway thing from the first movie as setup yeah. for this movie. The staff. We <laughs> just snaps the staff and he's oh, like, yeah. go get him! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just found in an alley in Philly of all places. <laughs> Did you just throw it away? We didn't need it anymore. <laughs> Yeah, that was a that was a great way to set Wisdom up this one. Wisdom of solo man. <laughs> yeah. So I want to watch it again. I do too. Yeah. If you if you have the opportunity and you you just want a, a good time, I definitely recommend going and seeing this. Me too. Let's let's get this movie to have at least some legs. It maybe it'll take off. Maybe it'll be huge. It'll that would be, be hilarious huge, if but... its second weekend was bigger than its first. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Has that ever happened before? Yes. Yeah, Avatar. But it's, Both avatars. Okay, well that those are yeah, yeah. That's crazy. So what we're what I'm hearing Luke say is we need to compare this to Avatar. That's yes. right. <laughs> it's only got two point <laughs> one point nine billion, billion dollars, dollars to catch up. One point seven. One point. One point nine seven. Something. Like one point nine seven billion dollars to catch up. Yeah. 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 I guess I don't know what it did internationally, but that was the most. Yeah. All right. Well, what do we got for news this week, gentlemen? Ooh. Any news stories? Ooh. Ooh. Um. Yes. I have some too. I don't know if I should do the sad news or the fun news. Do the sad news first. Let's get okay. sadness out of the way. Uh. It was just a couple days ago. Yeah. Um, Lance Reddick. Um, Lance Reddick passed away. Uh, yeah. He was sixty years old. Um, he was in the John Wick movies. He was in The Wire. He was gonna be Zeus in um, Percy, Percy, Percy Jackson. Jackson. Um, and most like personal to me, he was Commander Zavala in Destiny. Yeah. For ten years. Uh, this one hurt. Yeah. Um, and I, a lot of the Destiny community is pretty shook up about it. And I, I think a lot of people are just like, what are, what is Bungie going to do? Um, I'm not sure how much they filmed for Percy Jackson, so I don't know what they're going to do with that either. Yeah. But man, great actor, awesome yeah. voice actor, iconic voice. He was in Critical Role's yeah. thing. He was the bad guy. The Yeah, the big... Uh... Dragon. Why can't I think of his name? Arvok? I don't know. But the main, like, <laughs> bad dragon of season two. Made up a name. The big bad. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. 
And I, his voice is like distinct. It's iconic so, sounding. Yeah. He's yeah. Silas in Horizon. Yeah. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Friend. Yeah, I think I first saw him in Fringe. That was like twenty years ago. Yeah. So is he in Quantum Break too? Maybe. I'm gonna look it up. You look that up. But yeah, definitely. <laughs> Definitely um, sad news. Yep, he is. Okay. Yep. Um, just, oh man, it was so out of nowhere. Yeah. I don't remember who s- sent it in the group chat, and I was just like... Wait, what? Team Z. Yeah. Just like, kind of like hoping it was fake, because you're just like... No, 60? Like 60? Yeah, he's like again, like you're talking about. It seems like he's in. I'm not trying to call my parents old, but like that's younger than most of my parents. Like, right? Like, what? My parents are dead age where they can just like go. It's like ah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I don't need more gray hairs, Luke. Oh no. Hell, they coming. They coming. They coming. Just so yeah. Silver Fox, you. Oh, oh, not yet. Salt and pepper before Silver Fox. A salt and pepper fox. Yes. Yes. Do your thing, big dog. But no one could Big pull box. off. No one could pull off a bald head like Lance Reddick. Oh my gosh! True. Yeah, so he really rocked it. He did. He did. Rest in peace. Mm. We'll miss him immensely in all of our fandoms. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm glad we get to see him in John Wick Four yet. Still uh, coming up here in the next couple weeks. I am glad that he did get to see some of the success it's already sharing in terms of how it's being uh, yeah. received. Yeah. So. Yep. Yep. Bummer. All right. You have happier news? Well, it depends who you are. <laughs> okay. Uh, James Gunn confirmed to direct Superman Legacy. That's right. So if you're me, you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> also happy. Um, I am happy. They also I'm released happy. a synopsis. I'm, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious more than I'm happy. I'll read you guys this tonight. I'll say. I've just been really impressed with the amount of character James Gunn has put in his characters over his last several movies. Sure. That I just I feel like I'm going to get something I've missed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to read you guys the synopsis for Ooh. this. <clears throat> read it to me, Tyler. Hold on. Hold you can't on. find it. Got so there's pop-ups. just 50 billion pop-ups here. It's what you get for going to boundingintocomics.com. The synopsis <laughs> as follows brings back the tried and true motto Superman is renowned for. Renowned for. Superman Legacy tells the story of Superman's journey to reconcile his Kryptonian heritage with his human upbringing as Clark Kent of Smallville, Kansas. He is the embodiment of truth, justice, and the American way, guided by human kindness in a world that sees kindness as old-fashioned. All right. Sounds good. I like that synopsis. So, yeah, I'm into it. I'm here. I'm here for it. I'll be there to see it day one. <laughs> Look, Superman was never my favorite character growing up. Oh, and how I, dare you! And I've no, been, sorry. I've, I always enjoy seeing different writer, directors, actors' takes on the character. Um, and yeah. I've grown to love him a lot more. So, so I've. I don't know if I've said this a couple weeks ago or not, but I've been like periodically going into the older Superman movies. Mm-hmm. Like I watched, I sat down and watched all of Superman one, and I was off on on in Superman two, not the Richard Donner cut, yeah, the normal one, <laughs> which is not as good. Um, the Donner cut isn't on HBO Max, and that's stupid. How dare they? Um, he's got his own cut on HBO. So put the Donner cut in there. <laughs> Zack Snyder is the epitome of cinema, though. So you're not wrong. Martin Scorsese. <laughs> um. Anyway, I I finished Superman three this weekend. I'm not gonna lie, I really liked it. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. It's really stupid. It it's almost like a good bad movie. Those are fun. I thought Richard Pryor was so funny in it. It's a better version of Lex Luthor than whatever Gene Hackman did. Yeah. And the ending is just all of a sudden fighting a robot or a computer. <laughs> it's just like, what? I, and plus, like, the, there's the iconic bit where Clark fights Superman in the junkyard. 
which is just an incredible scene. Honestly, I'm really excited to watch Superman 4 Quest for Peace like throughout the week. <laughs> it has one of my favorite Superman shots ever in it, um, which is Otis and Lex Luthor are trying to steal some of Superman's hair from a museum. And they, they go into the museum and the hair is tied to something and it's holding a one ton weight and they take off they take off the enclosure from it or the glass or whatever and they clip it they just snip it and it's just like <laughs> that was holding a thousand two thousand pounds like it's, it's like the greatest thing ever oh. continuity matters oh it's so beautiful <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm I'm excited for Gunn to direct, and I I think the story behind him directing it, he kind of revealed on social media, makes me even more intrigued. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. by it because it it did sound like he really didn't want to direct it for a long time. Yeah, well, he I, he said he never had a story. He's like, I yeah. don't know what to do with it. Yeah, so I'm excited to see what he does. Yep. What you got next? Uh, I just have this. Hunting right okay, now. hold I'll on. Go on IMDb I have a story for this. Twister sequel has cast its first lead actress, oh. Daisy Edgar Jones. That's not the one I was hoping for. Yeah, that is um, not Helen Hunt. Um, Oof. It's obviously going to be Joe's daughter. Okay, okay, you know what? They have a bad relationship because yep. she's out chasing tornadoes. Yep. And probably because her, her dad died. No, I think. What's his name? He died a couple years ago, didn't he? Philip Seymour Hoffman? No. <laughs> Bill Paxton? Wasn't yes. it, isn't it Bill Paxton? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he passed away a couple years ago. Yep, yep. And so their relationship is a bit on the rocks, and they're going to bond over chasing tornadoes! Yeah! <laughs> I don't think I've seen anything that she's in... The biggest thing she's been in. Oh no, no, she was under in under the manner of heaven. Yeah, she's oh, yeah, the, she's Brenda. Oh, okay, she was really good in that. Yeah. yeah. So she's in it. She was in that movie with where she's a cannibal. Where she, the Winter Soldier is a cannibal. Hmm. Yeah. Isn't she? What? I don't know. Fresh. Yeah. Is that what that one was. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Um. You're not wrong. With Sebastian Stan. That's right. Could not remember. I don't think I've ever heard of that movie. Thanks for bringing it up. I haven't seen it. <laughs> I deserve about it. I think this is another big story uh, this week. Mm-hmm. Victoria Alonso leaving Marvel. Uh, she's yeah. the executive producer and the VP of production. Um, interesting timing. She was who oversaw post-production including visual effects. Oh. Um, so she has left Marvel. She has been on every, she's been an EP on every Marvel film since the Avengers. So that's a pretty big shakeup at that mm-hmm. level. Yeah. Um, interesting. I wonder who fills the role of VP of production now for that company. Okay, I know like Marvel VFX are kind of like under the rug at the moment. We're <laughs> making fun of it most of the time. They do have a pretty good track record also. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's they've worked themselves into a very hard to get out of hole, I think. Mm-hmm. They have really high standards, but also trying to cut budgets. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to save money. Yep. It's not easy to do. No, it's not. Um talking about people who can print money though, Jordan Peele's fourth film got a release date. Uh that's gonna be coming out Christmas twenty twenty four. Currently untitled. Currently untitled. I really Correct. hope it remains. It's it's called untitled. That'd be cool. That'd be awesome. He just he actually revealed the title of it. Yeah. And just nobody just knows. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. Well, I'm, it has I'm to fit into get out you uh get out us uh, nope. This one's gonna be called Okay. <laughs> Put the money on it. It's gonna be called Okay. <laughs> okay. Yep. With a period at the end. Okay. So it's interesting to me, though, that 
Jordan Peele, we, we call it Jordan Peele's fourth film. And mm-hmm. like that's kind of how his things are referred to, much like Tarantino's. Yeah. Um, who also has uh, officially plans to shoot his ninth movie? I think it's his, I think he said it's his last one. Yeah, it's his last Maybe film. His tenth. Um, so yeah, his tenth film. He plans to shoot it this year. Uh, it's about a movie critic. Yeah. Boy, what an interesting subject matter for your final film. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna go hard. Yeah, he's, he's which gonna... is interesting because I feel like he gets a lot of praise <laughs> for his stuff. It's, call, it's, it's called Tarantino. the movie critic. Yeah, the yeah. movie critic. Yep. Yeah. Is very, there a sequel to The Weatherman? <laughs> Sorry, Nick Cage. Definitely. So that's kind of kind of interesting, and uh, I'm excited to see what he comes up with. Yep. I have one thing left. Okay. Uh, we got our first poster for The Last of Us Season 2 from Neil Druckmann himself on social media. How dare he post this where I didn't see it? I don't follow him. I don't know how it made its way to my page, but... Because uh, Twitter shows you um, stuff mm. other people follow now. Got it. Is it just a... Oh, it's just a hand holding a hammer. It's Abby's hand. That, that one? Yeah, it's that. Interesting. Interesting considering they're still in such early discussion. Come on, Ad, get out of there. They're in such early discussions about what season two and three will entail. Because we know it's going to be three, at least three seasons. Yeah, they've yeah, already what, said that. What that's going to entail, right? Yeah. So, I'm assuming season two will be about introducing us to Abby. Yeah. Yep, I think so. IGN put out an entire thing of like, these are what we think season two episodes are going to be for oh the last gosh. one. Oh, gosh. It's just like, okay, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just like wait two years, please. Yeah, Look, and their whole business model is about getting people to come back to their site 15 times a day. Well, so. maybe they should stop giving everything a seven. <laughs> Well, Bella, because they do that as a company, they review things. Bella Ramsey also said that she expects, and she's an actress, mm-hmm. so take this with a grain of salt. She expects that season two would be coming out early twenty twenty five. So seems quick. <laughs> seems very quick. I can see that though. I think now that everything's established, I was going to say they they can move it around a little bit faster. Yeah, but and all all of a sudden less you, protocols too. Yeah. You've got more, um, you've got probably more money to pay your actors. Yeah. Therefore, your actors are more likely to fit you first into their schedules. And you can kind of plow through. And that, that tends to be what happens when you're in award uh, winning, or I guess it's not technically award winning yet, but critically acclaimed shows or movies. No, well, I mean, let's be honest. Want somebody. Never mind. <laughs> I think uh, JT kind of nails the IGN thing. J- IGN isn't in the market of news anymore. They're in the mar- business of engagement. Mm-hmm. 100%. I think you're very accurate with that statement. Yep. That's all I got for news. Okay. I'll leave um, it to you guys to carry it from here. No, I just... We all gave Shazam a three and a half on Letterboxd. We all gave it fanboy worthy. Hey, that's... Sorry, a, I just saw that. That's a seven. We're no, yeah, better, no. <laughs> we're no better than IGN. <laughs> so I don't like reviewing out of five. I like, because I see three and a half and I'm like, that's bad. And I'm like, oh, it's a seven. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, the only thing, the only other thing that I really was going to mention was that the. Boo! Nah. Everything, everywhere, all at once filmmakers are. In, they're directing one of the Skeleton Crew episodes for Star Wars. They're just directing one episode. They're not writing it. That it's... show sounds stupid, though. They may make it interesting. The one with Jude Law? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. What's on your mind? Expect, expect just... them to be all over the place the next two yeah. years. Yep. I don't see them really sticking with it. No, no, no. I think this will be much like how the Mandalorian is kind of this experiment of like who can we play with with directors 
get in to come in and do stuff, and then they, they find the ones they like. Yeah. And then they do more and more collaborations with them. I think, and this is kind of a similar thing where it's like, hey, this is a good marketing opportunity. We're having an Academy Award winning director duo come direct an episode of our show. If it turns out well, maybe work with them more. If not, whatever. No one's probably really heard about it, you know. Um. I don't know. I don't. I don't have any problem with it, but I also don't have any any investment in the skeleton crew yet. So, I just want them to make something else. I think this is more of like a hey, we're gonna work on this for this is a <laughs> this is a one month project, while we are developing our next thing. While they're developing their porno. Yeah. Porno. Yeah. For sure. Tyler's getting us demonetized. Not that we make money, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> jokes on us <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness okay anything else you guys want to talk about i think that wraps up my news i guess did you do anything this week that you want to mention i played a beta Ooh, of what oh diablo no 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 not the diablo. Oh, no. path traveler 3 no oh. no no i played the beta that everybody's really hankering to hear about mlb the show exo primal this is the RE Engine mech dinosaur killing game. Mech? Yeah, you get in like a little mech suit, run around with a gun, you're like... When you say mech, is it like Anthem? Or is it like Pacific Whoa. Rim? <laughs> What's like called? Anthem. Exo Primal? Exo Primal. And basically, it's a multiplayer game where you kind of... Oh, it's Capcom. Yeah. They used the RE engine for it, which I was talking about the RE engine last week and how cool it looks. Bring out gameplay that I can watch. But basically you have, there's two teams of five on the same map and they're racing to complete objectives. And there's very little like PVP, which is kind of interesting. Um, it was okay. I, I mean, I didn't think it was fantastic, but. Uh, and that does look like Anthem. It does. Yeah. It looks exactly like Anthem, like down to the art or the, like the design of character faces. <laughs> interesting and at certain times you get to control a giant dinosaur and kill stuff that makes the dinosaurs look weird it's not nearly as goofy looking as that yeah you have to fight like triceratopses and I miss Anthem see on my screen right now this guy's just going up against like a thousand raptors yeah or so something. the game will be like spawning raptors and they just start <laughs> falling out of the sky and you're like ah because okay, you're in a simulation. It's not taking itself too seriously. This, no. This looks kind of fun. There's there's probably a niche for it. Is it fun? It wasn't bad. I I think it would have been more fun if the beta had more to offer. So, like, it has one mode and... <laughs> 65 the game. There's no, no, ability, <laughs> no ability to see kind of, like, what customization options exist. Um, I which I think would have been good for it. Yeah. You know? Sure. So, but no, I mean, it's, it was certainly not horrible. I think it'd be fun to play with friends, have like a group to run around with and kind of mess around. Here, here's, yeah. here's my final question. And this is important. Can you play as the dinosaurs? Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now we're talking. Yeah. <laughs> so like your team. So th th that's part of the PVP aspect. Oh. So you can like spawn your dinosaur on their side and you control their, the dinosaur and you attack them. <laughs> It's pretty. It's so pretty is it like cool. a tower okay. defense game. Uh, kind of. Except you are the tower. <laughs> it's like a okay, like so you get objectives right, and you have like one is like dino culling. So you go to this area and you have to kill all the dinosaurs in the area. That's mm -hmm. that's one. Then it like towards the end, you both get to this, and like the whole time you're doing this. Sorry, the other team is doing similar things, and it's telling you like where they are in the process. So if they're beating you through the objectives, it'll be like you're slightly behind them. Like you need to pick it up. So it's like gambit. Kind of. <laughs> in a way, but not quite the same. It's Gambit, but with mechas and dinosaurs. Sure. And if we're speaking in general terms, yes. Kind of. Um, but the objectives are, like, they, they're they variable. It's not always the same. So, like, at the end, you'll have to move a thing point to point. Like, you have to be around it and move it while they're trying to attack you. Because at the end, they start, like, sending their dinos. Or, like, there's little things that you can peek through and shoot at the other team and... And then where the two points meet at the very end, both teams are there. So it gets pretty chaotic. It is cool. I mean, I didn't, I didn't think it was bad. I, I'd be very interested to see what it looks like when it comes out and how people will kind of 
play it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can change your exosuit at any time in the match, which I think is really cool. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was worth checking out for cool. a little while. I dig it. Triceratops. The other thing, I, sword. The other thing <laughs> I did was play uh, Call of Duty Ranked. Finally, with like a team of people. Yeah. That's a fun experience. And I played Halo with you. We did play, we did check out season three together, didn't we? Did. We? we did. I was having fun. When did season four come out? Like a year and a half? I actually think season four is like a normal 90 day cycle. Yeah, yeah. supposedly. Yeah. We'll the see countdown. if it gets delayed. Yeah. <laughs> the countdown says it comes out in like I have 70 a feeling, days. I have a feeling that the season three delay was more about season four than season three. Probably. I think it was one of those things where it's like we can't afford to delay. To, to have season three be another six month cycle. Right. So we need to just push this back and then. Now they just need to add account levels. And a battle royale. I don't care about that. I think it would be good for the population of the game. You've come a long way, Brett. Look, it's, the game's no fun to play if there's no one to play against. <laughs> hey, we were having fun wrecking fools. That's true. Let's do this more. Hit me up! <laughs> I just assume you're playing some PlayStation I'm single playing player some, game. Or sports games. <laughs> I really have an itch for sports games right now. I don't the show comes out next week and I'm so excited. Nice. Welcome to the show. Um, other than playing uh, Halo with Tyler, I really didn't do anything of note this week. We're preparing <laughs> for our Take 36. Yes, we are. We so, actually did location scout. We did. Yeah. I'm doing more location scouting this week, so. Nice. Talk about that off the air. Luke, did you do anything you want to mention? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I, I, I did a lot of fun stuff this week. Um, yesterday, with my mama, I went and saw oh, yeah. Anastasia. Yeah. Musical. Not the movie. Um. It was really good. He went to the theater. The theater! Yes, I was civilized. Um, Did you wear a suit? No. Or jeans. Nice. Um, everybody... I'm wearing sweats right now. Yeah, was, that's what I was checking. <laughs> um, almost everybody in the audience was coughing, so that was cool. The lady behind us was like... <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I gave her my classic dad turnaround, and just like... I've perfected that move. You've gotten pretty good at it. Um, anyway, she was coughing and she was low on water, so at half, at half time, at intermissions, she got popcorn. Like you're supposed to. Yeah, you know? yeah absolutely. Um, but no, the cast was great. The music was really good. The costumes were amazing. I really enjoyed it. The story is a little different than the, the movie. Obviously, they're both completely different than what actually happened because in real life, she was extremely dead. <laughs> um... I shouldn't laugh about that. <laughs> and it was a hundred years ago. <laughs> Too soon. Guess it depends who you ask. I really, um, I really wasn't laughing about the fact that she was dead. Just that how yes, you Baroque. how you said that. Yes, for Um, there it was weird because like in the first act, I felt like the characters were super quiet. Um, which was unfortunate. So you had to like really, really, really actively listen mm -hmm. which isn't a bad thing but like it's like leaning in to hear stuff sometimes um but if i felt like they fixed it in the second um second act it was really good i had a great time good. um i just want to mention this really quick but i i rewatched ford v ferrari oh we talked about that oh, that movie's that movie is so good it is so good. If you haven't watched Ford v Ferrari, please check it out. Do yourself a favor. It is currently on Hulu. If you have Hulu and don't want to pay for it, um, but honestly, I think that movie is worth buying. It's worth renting. It's incredible. Check it out. Um, however, the bulk of my week has been dedicated to one game. Mm. A game I love. It's not Destiny. <laughs> what? I know, right? No. Like, down. But they shadow dropped another expansion on us. That would probably fill in some blank spots from the narrative. Oh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I set down Destiny because my 
Cop, did I bring it? Your case? My case. He's rifling around in his backpack. Um. Oh yeah. My copy, a hard copy. I didn't want to buy it digitally. There, got it. Of Metroid yeah, Prime yeah. remastered. Finally, oh, it's. Yeah. <laughs> um, remastered finally came in. Um, I was really late on my pre-order, so I didn't get one when it initially came out. I had to wait a little bit. And then it got delivered to my old address, so I could Oh, no. <laughs> kind of funny. Are they pretty cool about giving it to you? Yeah. Um, they'd already beat it by the time I got it. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, here, it's really good. Um, it's, it's a game I loved playing on GameCube when it came out. It was, it was a lot harder when I was a child. Um, but it's still just as fun, and now it looks super pretty. Um, I'm using a Pro Controller on the Switch, and they incorporated another joystick into turning, which is so nice. Um, it makes moving a lot better. And then the number one greatest thing is that the Switch is just more powerful than a GameCube, mm -hmm. and so it can load the next room instantly. So when I shoot a door... It doesn't just sit there and load for the next, sometimes like five to ten minutes back on on the GameCube. You just sit there and be like, I think my game is broken. Like, no, it's loading a really big room with lots of lights and enemies. Yeah. Um, now it just, I, I can walk straight through, and it's super awesome. I'm probably like ten minutes away from fighting the, the big bad. He's so close. I'm so close to beating oh it. Oh my gosh. I can, I can smell Meta Ridley. Right around the corner. I'm ready for him. Um, if if you haven't played this, I I would really recommend you so try the, it out. That it's, was gonna be my question. Was is this a good one for me to jump into it? Yeah. At okay. Yeah, it's it won't feel like terribly aged or anything. I don't think so. Okay. I I All think right. the only thing that honestly I've struggled with is the jumping. Mm -hmm. It honestly just might be because. I'm so I played Destiny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like you double jump constantly in that game, and like you do that in this too because you lock onto somebody. Yeah. So you don't even have to aim, and you're just like sidestepping and jumping all over the place. <laughs> and so the movement is super quick, and then you're just like going on platforms, and I hit the button in the wrong time. It's like ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh, I'm glad nobody's around to see that embarrassing jump, but. Um, it has a grapple hook, Ooh. so obviously it's great. Obviously. Yeah. Um, Game of the Year. are better, that's why Destiny added one. Clearly. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun. Um, and it is, like, it's a Metroidvania. It's where the name comes from, Metroid. <laughs> Whoa! Um, and it's, it's weird because, like, it's not the normal 2D, it's first-person adventure shooter. Yeah. And sometimes you're just like, oh, I got no idea where I am, and the map, <laughs> the map can be confusing. Sure. Um, and a lot of times, you'll just be like, I don't know where I need to go next, and you'll get a... Um, you can turn it off or turn it on. If you're just, like, wandering around, it'll be like, we're getting this signal from this room. Oh. Um, but it doesn't show up on your HUD. It just shows you the room you need to get to. Get to. Um, which is super helpful. And also, straight up, if you need to use a walkthrough to figure out where you're supposed to go next, just do it. <laughs> I, I, I've i played it before, and I'm using it again sometimes. Because it's just like, you know what? Right. I don't want to look at every room. Right. Yeah. It's not like more modern games that will like tuck little things in every room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, they'll begin. It is, rooms that you just go in, and it's like, oh, there's nothing here. It is really cool, though, because sometimes you'll walk into a room, and there's just this giant chasm... You see grappling hooks go all the way across, and you're just like, okay, I guess I need to remember that this is here. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're 75% of the way through the game, and you finally get the grapple hook, and you've forgotten that that room even existed. <laughs> and eventually you're wandering around, and you make it back there, and you're just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about this. And there's a missile expansion on the other side. Nothing to anything even important. Oh, all right. <laughs> I mean, missile expansions are important. 
my number one tip if you're playing this game for the first time. You walk by a save station room, save. Use it. Use it. It's free. You won't regret it. It's a good tip. <laughs> also, watch out for the lava, because <laughs> there's nothing... Lava hurts. You can take a lot of damage in this game. Also, I'm playing on normal. I'm not even playing on easy. I'm playing on the hardest difficulty. Whoa. I'm a freaking gamer, brother. Whoa, dog. Um, when did you get good at games? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> um, but no, I'll fall in the lava and it'll chew me right up. Spit me right out. Take half my health. Like a thousand health. Anyway, great game. Been having a blast. Highly recommend. I hope to play it. Boss, it's so beautiful now. Yeah, it looks pretty. It's such a pretty game. I think they did a great job of making it look really good. It's not a remake. It's it's a remaster. Mm -hmm. So, like, the systems are all the same. Right. Except now you have two joysticks. Yeah. You're not using a C-stick to select your weapons. Mm -hmm. You can actually turn them out. Great. Nice. Take that in. <laughs> um, cool. I love it. Also, the music kicks freaking booty. It's I will, so good. Uh, I will make sure I check it out. I'll find, I'll find time. Don't know when, but I'll find time. It's single player. No, no, I'm out then. Gosh dang it, Brett! <laughs> when are you going to beat Control? Has anybody else beat freaking Harry Potter yet? I'm in like the last part. Gosh dang it. I've been busy. I don't care. Priorities shifted. I, I, need, you to, I need you to potato on the couch and throw, your way, throw away your life for a day okay. and play a video game. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. I need you to be unresponsible <laughs> for once in your life. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you for watching in, tuning into the live stream, or, or even just listening this week's episode. Um, I have no idea what next week's episode is going to look like, if we're even going to have one. Yeah. Next week may be a skip week. Um, I'll be here. Luke's going to come over and do the show by himself, maybe. I'll just play Destiny. Oh, what? Luke can just live stream some Destiny. There you go. I love it. Um, but we'll let you know on the socials if we are if we are having a show or not. But uh, we'll definitely be back in two weeks, um, 100% for sure. And until then, we'll see you guys.